Well, let's start with the coming week and what the Reserve Bank does about rising inflation and then interest rates. Its key judgment call is about when it's done enough to bring the consumer price index down. The problem is this week, inflation went up. The monthly inflation gauge for April rose to 6.8%. The key underlying rate that the Reserve Bank watches, the trim mean, was up from 65 to 6.7%. What is really clear, Mr Speaker, is that the peak in inflation is behind us. And while it has been higher than we'd like for longer Order. than we'd like, it is expected to moderate Order. over the year ahead, which is a point that the RBA Governor made today in his testimony. Moderate it may, but that inflation reading and the Fair Work Commission decision to award five and three quarter percent pay rises to the lowest paid workers and those on modern awards prompted some senior economists to change their forecasts. ANZ says two more rate rises are coming. The cash rate will peak at 4.35 per cent. The Commonwealth says no more rate rises, but it's got an upward bias. The NAB says it's line ball, but it still says one more rate rise in July. Right now, as it stands, core inflation is sticky. We're seeing this overseas. And, of course, our interest rates are lower than everyone else overseas. The, the, the issue for Australia this whole cycle is whether or not we can get away with a lower interest rate than other countries. And at the moment, it's increasingly looking like we can't. We're going to have to get that rate over four. The worry, though, is that the Reserve Bank will be raising rates as the economy is slowing fast. But the ground rules from the RBA Governor, Philip Lowe, they're pretty clear. We've increased interest rates a lot. Monetary policy is restrictive and it's working. And uh, whether we need to increase rates further will depend not only what happens with unit labour costs, what happens with the global economy, with inflation expectations, consumer spending. So they're the, the variables that we're looking at. And with that knowledge, late this week, the Fair Work Commission raised the minimum wage, and for those on modern awards, by, as I said, five and three quarter percent. It's pretty much right in the middle of union claims of seven percent and employer claims closer to four percent. The Reserve Bank to this date says wages are not adding to inflation, but we do have a big problem. That's a lack of productivity growth. Unit labour costs, well, they're rising still. Nominal wage growth at the moment isn't a problem and nominal wage growth has not been the source of inflation, I want to make it clear. The problem is weak productivity growth. Over the last three years, there has been no increase in the average output produced per hour worked in Australia. No increase for three years. No productivity growth for three years. And that's a problem. And that problem, which sits firmly with the government, could well be the trigger for higher rates. If unit labour cost growth is 35 to 4%, then it's hard to have 2.5% inflation. So that's the issue that I'm drawing attention to. And the best solution to this is a lift in productivity growth. 